Simon Hicks. They'll loosen up that line. You won't see 11 players within five yards of that body. I think I mentioned, what, a bludgeoning or something like that. <laughs> That's what they came out and did. Seven state championships since 2014. I tell you what, for those young men, there's no better feeling right now. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Five Focus, the podcast here on the Red Devil Radio Show Facebook page, YouTube channel, Spotify, wherever you may be watching, wherever you may be listening. We welcome you in and thank you for joining us. We appreciate all of our listeners, all of our watchers. And and I want to say this right off the bat. It's because of you that we get to do this, that we are doing this, that we enjoy doing this. It's only because of you. And we, we've had a few people reach out to us over the last few weeks and just make it known how they feel. And because of you, we're going to continue on. We're going to continue continue to press forward. I'm Adam Ward alongside Drew Sims, Greg Mears, and Jeremy Johnson. JB unable to be with us because he decided to have date night and good for him. God bless him for that. But uh, they went out and and are having fun and we're here having some fun. We're going to have fun for the next little bit and tell you all about some wonderful things. This episode is going to be a little heavy. We got a lot to dive into. We're going to get into it in just a moment. But again, as I mentioned a moment ago, if you're watching us, you're listening to us, you already know where you can get us, whether it's on Facebook, at the Red Devil Radio Show on YouTube, uh, the at symbol, Red Devil Radio Show on Twitter or X, whatever Elon's calling it now, Red Devils Fun 927, and on Spotify by searching Five Focus, the podcast. Uh, and uh, we have uh, probably going to be making a move also by putting um, uh, using the Five Focus, the podcast show uh, on Spotify as sort of an archive as well during the upcoming season to bank the audio from the games. So if you ever need to go back and listen to it, you have more than one way to go back and get it, not just on Facebook and the live video feed, but you can go on Spotify and listen to it in your car while you're going down the road, going to work, going down to the grocery store, whatever it may be. So keep keep that in mind as we get a little closer to the season. Five Focus, the podcast, you know who it's presented by, our title sponsor, Froggy Free Shaved Ice. And I got to tell you guys, it's warming up out there. And the moment I'm thinking we're getting some good weather to go out to Froggy Free Shaved Ice, God decides that the earth needs a little more rain and thunder and lightning. So we haven't been able to get out there. But Miss Johnson, Levant, I promise we've already discussed it as a group. We're coming and we're going to get a shaved ice. We're going to enjoy some good old fashioned weather, some good old fashioned ball. And we're going to come get some shaved ice. Folks, you can join us, too, by going to a Fife game, whether it be varsity, baseball, softball, JV, whether it be the little kids. You go out to the fields. They've got three trailers. One of them is at least one of them is going to be there at the ball field. Get you a shaved ice, any flavor you want out of 35 players and uh, flavors. And if you want to mix and match, they will do that, too. Oh, and by the way, they'll take the show on the road and be at any event you want them to be at. Family reunion. We didn't get them over there for mine. I know. I know. But they'll do any event you want, okay, folks, whether it's a church function, family function, uh, school function, doesn't matter. You can get them there for a nominal fee, and I promise you, you will be the hit of the party by just bringing in a nice, cool treat. Give them a call, 256-717-7239. Again, 256-717-7239, the number on your screen there. Uh, What's upcoming in this podcast? You know a segment we've started doing the last few weeks. We continue this week with How It Works, Position Groups with Drew and Greg. This week, we're taking a look up front, the big uglies, if you will, the offensive and defensive lines. We'll get into that in just a moment. We'll also talk pretty heavily. This is where the show was going to get heavy, NCAA tournament. It'll be the last time we really go into this because, man, oh, man, oh, man, what a wild weekend it certainly was. And I've got a question that I'm going to pose later to the guys that we may not even want to end up talking about, but I'm going to pose it anyway. People may not be ready for it. Uh, We'll also have the Where Was Greg t-shirt segment, and it will encompass a very recent trip by our man Greg Mears. And uh, looking forward to hearing the tale of the tale and, of course, uh, what's up coming at five. So, gentlemen, with that being said, welcome in. Let's get right to it with position groups with Drew and Greg, offensive line, defensive line. Now, uh, I made the mistake, Greg, uh, uh, early on mistaking you for having been a defensive or offensive lineman. Uh, and, and you pretty quickly <laughs> corrected me on that. But – yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't fat back then. I wasn't <laughs> <a shitty baby. laughs> he, he beat me to it. I was going to say, that's because he was, he was a lot lighter yeah. back then. Well, I, I was totally just thinking mainly because of your height. 
It, it, not 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 because of, of, of what is protruding from the, the neck down. I don't know any other well, did, way to put it. I did play some tight end, you know, till, till, till Jimmy Taunton came back to town and I got to relegated to second string on that one. Well, but but see, here you go. Here you go. So you lead you lead right in there. He mentions playing tight end, Drew. That's something at five. That at many other schools, tight ends are strictly tight ends, whether they're blocking or they're out catching passes. At five, they are considered an extension of that offensive line, much like a wingback is or a sniffer. Yeah. The tight end in that area is considered an extension of the offensive line. Let's stick on that side of the ball just for a second. What does that mean? What does that entail? Well, you know, a lot of the, a lot of what we talk about, um, you know, again, Monday's defense, Tuesday's offense. So a lot of the O linemen and D linemen are the same. So on Mondays, there'll be defensive linemen. On Tuesdays, there'll be offensive linemen. So a lot of the drills are about hand placement, um, you know, footwork, um, the center snapping the ball every time, um, snapping to somebody every time he's running through the drills. Um, you know, at five, if you're a lineman, you got to know how to pull. So mm -hmm. the footwork, you know, getting the footwork right. Um, getting your fits right. Everybody, a lot of people want to talk about fits. Your blocking fits, it, it is a thing. Um, to try and explain it, you know, if I'm if I'm uh, if I'm just blocking somebody straight up, um, there's a that's the fit straight up. If I'm pulling, and and I'm trying to uh, you know block a linebacker that may be coming free or block block a defensive lineman that's intentionally left you know, unblocked until the puller comes. Um, that's, that's my fit. Um, so getting the fits right, um, on offense and defense, defensive line, um, you know, an offensive line's goal is to get to the second level, get to linebackers. Um, and that way, you know, your running back doesn't get touched until he's four or five yards down the field. Um, and at that point, um, you know, maybe it can make somebody miss. But then on defensive line, the defensive line, you're trying to let the linebackers run free, um, you know, take up as many offensive linemen or as much space as you can, um, plug as many holes as you can on defensive line. So a lot of drills around that, um, around those those concepts, really. How crucial is it? Um, and then I'm basing this question solely off of the, well, uh, more than one reason, but a big reason because of, the last few years, we we have seen Coach Benefield um, be forced into a situation where he's still shuffling up front, spe uh, specifically speaking on the offensive side of the ball, up front. He's shuffling three, four games, even sometimes five games into the season. He's still trying to find the best combo that, that works up front and where – uh, and, and it might be a, end up a situation sometimes where, okay, well, these are the five or six guys that I need up front. Now I just got to figure out where they go. How crucial is it for those guys to be able to go from, say, left guard to right tackle or or be able to snap the ball? Center has been has somewhat been a problem in, in the past at, at different times, specifically snapping the ball more than anything. Um, how crucial is it for those guys to be a little bit more versed and able to do that? Because we're not talking about guys lining up in the backfield uh, on the offensive side and then going and playing cornerback on the other side of the ball like we, we did last week. We're talking about guys who have to use different techniques than than the than those other types of guys like a Logan Anderson and such. So how important, how crucial is it for guys to be able to rotate back and forth like that? And, and how much more difficult, though, on the flip side of that, does it make it to find the right combo? Well, I'll say this. There's a reason uh, probably the smartest um, guys on most football teams are your offensive linemen. And, and, and may, that may be more college and NFL more than at five. Uh, but, um, I mean, just imagine, you know, if you ever see Coach Benefield with a play sheet, right, it's, fit, yeah. it's full. I mean, it's got – plays all over it every one of those plays is a different blocking assignment every time so so drew can i stop right there yeah so you know to hear people on the outside talk you know five runs three plays and i think you've got into that in the past but back to what you're saying 
it's not necessarily the, li the alignment or anything like that. Every play is a different blocking assignment for those offensive lines. Yeah. So they're they're they have to retain that to yeah. know where they're supposed to be. Right. With the, and for with the, the one, and for the ones play. moving. Well, they may learn how to do how to be left guard first. Well, then they got to move to right tackle. So now they got to learn a whole new. Yeah. That's like learning a whole new set of plays. They're the same plays in reality, but you got to learn them all over again because it's a new it's a new position. It's it's um uh, you know, and Coach Benefield likes to get um uh, he likes to get tricky with it sometimes. Um, he throws a lot of. Uh, a lot of things in there. I don't want to give away too much or anything, but <laughs> yeah, please don't. He throws a lot of, he'll, he'll call a play. And then later on in the season, he calls the same play and he adds something to it. Totally changes, totally changes mm -hmm. the blocking or totally changes the alignment or, or something like that. Um, and we've seen it and, and we talk about it nonchalantly. Oh, well, he's shuffling people up front. Listen, that's, that's a big deal. That's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not plug and play like, it's not the same three plays. There's yeah, there's a lot of plays, and all the assignments are different for every every position. You know, um, I never – well, I was a center in junior high, and I, I'm glad I got rid of that because I, I – <laughs> listen, I cannot explain <laughs> how hard it is to snap a football between your legs and then remember what you're doing after that. Yeah. It, it's a it's a different animal. Snapping the football is a different animal. If you if you've ever tried it, it's it's more than just grabbing a football by the you know by, by the tip of the ball and just slinging it between your legs. Any anybody can do that, but in order to do it properly, the right way, where the quarterback needs it to be, um, especially the moment where you're handing it off and whatever, it's got to be. It, it ain't got to be perfect, but it better be darn near close. Let me put it to the other side of the football. Uh, Greg, jump in here with this one because on the defensive side. As Drew said, a lot of the drills kind of translate, if you will, to being the same from one side of the ball to the other, in particular for linemen, especially at five, whether it's under Coach Househalter or Coach Benefield. And a lot of what Coach Benefield does is modeled after what Coach Househalter uh, did. Uh, you played for Coach House, so did Coach Benefield. Uh, but one thing that folks have heard us talk about before on the podcast, and this gives us a perfect opportunity, or on the on the radio show, rather, gives us a perfect opportunity to explain are things like the A and B gaps, uh, and even in some cases the C gaps. Tell folks what that means to to hit the A gap, hit the B gap, whatever. Well, see, we didn't have A gaps and B gaps, and we were a strictly number system back then. Oh, really? So with running that deer, yeah, it was the two-hole, four-hole, six-hole, eight-hole, and then that was all the right side. So it would be a 28-toss sweep, which would be the two back around the right side. The A eight-hole was around the end. So it was a little bit different terminology back then. But like Drew said, it's kind of the same thing. Householder's defense was made for the linemen to take up as much space as they could, and our linebackers were roaming free to make the, make the hits as much as possible. So a lot of it was the same way. We were very, very on the defensive line stunt. Those guys rarely took a gap and went straight ahead. And yeah. part of that was probably because of our, our size and speed. That, you know, we, were, we were a smaller group. <laughs> yeah, smaller, smaller guys. Yeah, we had Keith McClendon. Now, he was, you know, big 6'4". But most of us were like I'm saying I was playing line at 165 pounds, some you know. So, but uh, again, it's a it's a lot the same. We we lined up left side, right side. Drew, I don't know how much did y'all go live because we went live every Monday and Tuesday. Uh, beginning of the season, we we did we do some on Mondays. Um, we'll do beginning of the season. We'll do at least one hit and drill during on Mondays as the season goes on. Um, Kind of, I would say week seven, eight, nine. We get, um, we start going shells on Monday. Yeah. Um, See, we were, we were live. We were full pads Monday, Tuesday. We'd go shells on Wednesday, and yeah. then helmets only on Thursday. And it was mostly yeah. special teams on Thursday. But the drills are all pretty much the same. You're lining up in front, and there we're working. One time we're working on our offense for a period, say a 15, 20 minute period. Whistle blows, and those guys switch over to the other side, and you start working on defense and what the right. team you're about to play that week. So uh, we, uh, you kind of brought this brought this up a little bit in that uh, smaller guys, a lot of folks when they think whether it's defensive front, offensive front, you think of, uh, and I mentioned in the, in the top of the show, the big uglies, if you will, the way I introduced it. <laughs> at, at five, 
you don't really get a lot of the quote unquote big uglies because the the type of kids that are coming through are a little bit different. They're Coach Benefield prides prides himself and his program on the on the on the weight room more than he does the product on the field. He understands that in order to get the product on the field that he wants desires to have, it has to come first from the weight room. So they're not necessarily the 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 big gut hanging out type of guys that that once they plant their feet they're they're not going to be moved like you see in 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 some other schools at, in six and seven A's and and even college and professional ranks. They're there. A lot of times you get somebody and I'm going to be frank, you get somebody like a Tucker Wilkes who is, who is wide framed, but he's, he's not necessarily that, that heavy gut kind of guy. He's very stout. He's very strong. So how do you utilize guys that are, uh, that are not so much big in that regard, but maybe that are a little bit smaller, but you still put them up front. For instance, we watched a kid get moved in Anthony mill in the Geraldine game. Coach didn't know where to use him. Coach admittedly said we still had no idea where we wanted him, and so that next week he moved him to defensive line. He never left yes. defensive line from that point on, no. and he's one of the smallest guys out there. How about that... hundred, about one hundred sixty-five pounds. That's what it's do... all about, speed, man. Yeah. If you can get off that ball and beat that, you know, beat that lineman to the gap, whatever gap you're going, before he gets a chance to move his foot the right direction, or he hesitates and doesn't move that foot the right direction. That's where somebody like like Anthony Mills came along. I mean, that that's why we saw him in the backfield so much. Just like he said, yeah. quick as a hiccup, man. You get back there, and it don't matter how big you are, if you can't catch me, you can't block me. <laughs> it, 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 in addition to that, with the size factor, that you know, I feel like the the, the kids got to be tough too. Because yeah. I, I saw oh, yeah. it. With, with that being said, I did see him a couple of times during the playoffs. I mean, he had two linemen on top of it. <laughs> yeah, so you got to be tough. In addition to that, and I'm, I mean, he proved that out this season. And I, I reflect back, uh, Poncho, uh, what's it, Perez? Poncho Perez. Poncho, yes. Poncho yeah. uh, 50. got Hunter Hall, undersized nose tackles. Parker uh, and I can, yeah, I can go back that far. And those guys, yeah, they weren't big. They're not going to clog the middle, right. or they may, but it's more, they, they're faster than whoever's in front of them, and they have better technique. And yeah. so I, I see that every time, and I think that you know, it's what's impressive from a guy that size. So and, and the me, main thing – go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say something real quick, Adam. Go ahead. Like, like you were talking about, though, these guys in the, the weight program that Benfield has, these guys are so much stronger yeah. than we were. Yeah. And even, even though they're a small team, man, these boys today are so much bigger than we were. I walk by <laughs> them out there on the field and go, holy crap. Because you sit up in that box, they don't, you know, you can't really tell the difference. No. And then you get down close to them and go, man, we were just a bunch of munchkins compared to these guys. And like <laughs> I said, they're not even big. So, yeah. Well, I, th and I, I'll say this too before we transition. Uh, bringing up Anthony Mill, it made me think of a conversation that I had with him the day before the state championship game. So many folks uh, are aware, if you're not, when Fife makes a championship, we follow them. Uh, maybe not all of us get to do that because of our work situation. Certainly I do. Um, and I take whoever can go. We follow them. We do some live shots, um, from, uh, when they're making it to the hotel, just to let everybody know that the team has arrived safe. Uh, of course we, we, before that we get them leaving, uh, from the, the victory line, if you will, that's formed by the community and the charter buses. We, we get the, all of that. We go with them to practice and we learned a lesson back in 2015, um, one or two pictures and that's it. No more because we're not giving away any state secrets. Um, I don't want to stay on that one. I got in trouble. Uh, no. but, uh, I did get to really meet Anthony. I had, I had met him before, but did not get a chance to really have a conversation. And so after they went through the walkthrough, which Drew can attest to this, those practices before state championship, I'm going to use the term practice loosely because they're not full speed. They're not doing anything. It's it's mainly a walkthrough with, with, with the helmets on, and they're just going through the game plan. There's no point in trying to get anybody hurt. There's no point in going any kind of full speed because you want your guys to be as rested as possible. So they did that. They went. They did that, I think, for 45 minutes, 45, 50 minutes. They stopped, and Coach Benefield said, okay, you can have a little time to take pictures five or ten minutes before we load the bus and go have team dinner and then go back to the hotel and rest. So I took a few minutes to get to talk with Anthony. I shook his hand and, and finally got to properly introduce myself. And we ended up talking for about five minutes. I asked him the difference because many who don't remember, he came from Plainview. I asked him what the difference is. 
Um, I'm not going to – I don't remember exactly full sale quote what Anthony said, so I'm not going to try to do that or put words in his mouth. Um, and, but maybe what I will tell you will redeem me somewhat in Coach Benefield's eyes for, as he said, making excuses for something. Um, <laughs> he said the difference is night and day, that it is a winning culture at Fife mm-hmm. as to where it's not on the other side of the tracks, if you will. Um, and it's and it's something that he felt like he just wasn't getting. And when he came to Fife, he realized that if I wanted not only a shot to win a a state championship, but I I had a real chance of not only winning one, but being a part of it, actually getting to be involved. Yeah. Um, and not just say, well, I rode the bench. I, I, I got to be a part of the team. <laughs> I get to be a part of it. I get to take part. So um with with that being said, um that that's sort of a testament to what not only yeah. Coach Benefield has built brings to the table as a coach, but honestly, it makes him want, it makes makes him stand out as one of the best, one of the reasons why kids want to play for him. Yeah. That make bona fide, legitimate moves. By the way, I'm, I want to tell you that right now. I, I will stand my ground on that. Uh, all yeah. these other places that do all that, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> Gulf Shores is still under investigation. Oh boy, here we go. I found that out. Gulf Shores is still under active uh, 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 yeah. AHSAA investigation yeah. after all of that mess. That doesn't happen at Fife. I no. I, I I can promise you. I promise. I'm I'm not going to get into how how I know these things, but I promise you. I promise you. All the naysayers out there, sh- just shut up. Can I can I be frank? Just shut up. Yeah. I'm done ranting. Yeah. I'm yeah. Hey, could I say something right here Please. since we're talking about Please. Anthony Mill? And I think I Please. told you guys this. I was so impressed with with him because uh, I'm an underdog guy, right? I love ro- rooting for the underdog. And I know in many cases, Fife's not an underdog, but I always love the underdog. And and what I was so impressed with not only Anthony and his effort. I love effort people, and and you could see he's given he's given his maximum effort there i was impressed with his family they showed up they were in the stands every week with the, with t-shirts with his number on it and i i thought that was so impressive and and i told you guys this if i'm not or correct me if i'm wrong but i believe he won defensive player of the year did he not win that uh in decap county did he not win some type of defensive award or was there or not a, an award I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm not one. I can't recall. But I will say this. He played. He's a state champion. He played on a state championship team. As you said, Adam, he was a not a uh, he was not just a part of the team. He was a major contributor to the effort there to win a state championship. And I told you guys this. They didn't know who he was at playing. And I'm just going to go ahead and say they didn't know his name. The coach didn't know his name, and he didn't play. I don't remember them ever calling his name in the years past when they played Plainview. No, I, I, and if I, I were him, if I were him, I would take that state championship ring. I'd put it on my finger. I would take that miniature version of that blue map, and I would make a necklace out of it, and I would find out where Dale Pruitt and Jeremy Pruitt, where they went to church, where they oh, ate. Me, oh, me, oh, me, oh, me. I would up every freaking time they were there. And I wouldn't say a word. That's just what I'm saying. But because Applebee's. Somebody, somebody somewhere overlooked the kid that was had everything that you asked for as a player, and they wouldn't give him the time of day, whether that be because of his size or who he was or whatever the case. So I'm just going to say it. Uh, uh, SEC coach didn't recognize that this kid had the the the, the intangibles and the ability to to play at a high level, and now he's a state champion, and maybe a state champion in the second year. You you, you know what that is that you're referencing? I, I got to take these off so you can see, but watch this. Heart. Yeah, heart. he has heart, and that's why I love sports. That's why I love sports. That's that's why. I gravitate toward kids that are underdogs, but they gave it every effort. So you can cut that out, Adam. You cut that out. I'm not going to. I'm not going to because I want to add this too. Coach Benefield. I'd like to add something too, also. 
Uh, let me let me I'd say like to this, add too, JJ. Adam. You were the first one that week after the Geraldine game. When, and, and I didn't mean for us to get on Anthony like this, but hey, while we're doing it, let's give the dude, let's give the dude his flowers. I believe in giving roses to those who deserve them, and he absolutely deserves them. JJ was the was the one on the crew. I specifically remember it was like the second or third play defensively that very next week after the Geraldine game, and he got in the backfield from the lineman position uh, seemingly untouched. I mean, just in a hiccup. And I remember specifically JJ over there going, whoa, out loud, you went, Whoa, where did that come from? Mm. And from that point on, we knew, okay, let's see if this kid could do it again. And sure enough, the very next play, boom, there he is yep. again. So yep. I got to give you credit, too. You saw that before yep. when maybe some others, like you say, didn't. Greg, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say what, you know, y'all were talking about culture and what happened to Anthony up there. And I'm going to tell you, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. That's the culture there. Um, guys, I mean, that's why I transferred to five. I didn't touch the field. You know, I mean, we're beating people. We're county champs my sophomore year. Hell, I don't think I played 30 seconds. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm not a starter, whatever. But, you know, I, I should – you know, I'm not a tackling W either. So, that's why I left. That's it. I didn't have this or they didn't know me when I got there. I transferred in from Florida, all this fun stuff. But you went to five and you got a chance with House Halter. Like, I think you get a chance with Vinifield. I had the chance. So, fifth game, all of a sudden, I'm starting tied in. The next year, yeah. again, I'm nothing nothing great, fantastic, but I'm making all county, all area. That I'd have never would have touched the field at Plainview. I'd have been if you I'd have been play, tackling you buddy. Yeah. Yeah. If you played there at five, and I think that's still the culture. You're mm-hmm. not gonna you don't have to be some, you know, some name out there or <laughs> somebody doesn't have to know your parents. If you can play, yeah. you're gonna play. And we're not talking yeah. we're we're only talking football culture, by the way. We're not talking in the culture in baseball or softball or basketball. Yeah. We don't have the in with those that we do with football. So yeah. we, we're not gonna we're not gonna just bash everything, but well, we're talking specifically football. And as you all know, I came from, from Plainview myself. So Who's bashing? Nobody's bashing. We're just we're not the truth. We're spitting truth here, baby. <laughs> I've got, I got a lot of friends up there. I still got a lot of friends from Plainview. Great friends. Uh, oh, and yeah. They, they'll oh, tell yeah. you the same yeah, thing, yeah. though. I yeah, mean, no, they, no, it's no, not yeah. like they don't know it. Oh, no. Even the yeah. ones that yeah. stayed and stuff. I mean, it's just, it's the culture. It's the way it is. And no, that wasn't not, was... making excuses, coach. Speaking no, of coach, no. speaking of coach, I got to ask because <laughs> I can see it in the background. You finally went and got to got to see Coach and get your gift. Let me pull up the mouse here. Show us, uh, uh, show us what Coach gave you here, Greg. Tell us what this is. This is a seven A Super Seven, or uh, not seven A, but a Super Seven ASAA football signed by the uh, by the team. I was able to get up there on I guess last Tuesday or Wednesday and and actually see him, and he was gracious enough, Coach. I appreciate it. Uh, going right up here on the wall. I'm going to get me a tee and set it up here right when I get a chance. But uh, fantastic. I appreciate it. And that's still why the hell they won't play us, by the way. So there you I, go. I was just about to say, tell us why Coach Coach wanted you to have that. I, I could do it, but it, just tell tell the folks why. <laughs> well, we were talking about why Fife and Plavy wasn't playing this year, and we came up with all these PC reasons why they couldn't and they're in a nine team league and all this fun stuff and i've just basically said the reason why they won't play us is because they're tired of getting the hell beat out of them every year <laughs> i wouldn't want to play us either yeah. i mean you know you lose hey. games 14 15 years in a row by 30 and 40 points you probably want to yeah. go somewhere else yeah that's good common sense yeah and and I for the it. record for the record <laughs> I'm the one that gave the PC answer, and and uh, Greg, you ended up actually saying it off, he did. off camera. Um, you understood why I had to give the oh, PC yeah. answer. Uh, I think Coach does too, but Coach ragged on me. I ran into Coach a few weeks ago, and he ragged on me about it. Um, as he should. I, 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 as he should. I, I know Coach well enough to know there was a hint of, uh, uh, of fun with it, but he was also serious. Um, yes. I I do have to have to uh, because of my job. I don't just get to be the five guy day in and day out. Yeah. My job requires me um, to go talk with coaches, not just in DeKalb County, but coaches all over Marshall, Madison, Jackson, Morgan. Um, I I have and in Tennessee, I got to go to Tennessee and do this too. So I got to maintain at least some halfway respectable relationships with many of these coaches. Um, 
Some we don't. Shun me. We, we don't. No, we don't. You guys don't. I, 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 I can. Do I can neither confirm nor deny that that <laughs> might have come up when I went and got the football. I'm not sure whether it did or not, but there may have been something said about that answer. <laughs> oh, you're full of crap. You know there was. Uh, yeah, hey, hey. Now, Adam can Adam can say, "Hey, look, I can't control what these guys say on the air." <laughs> He can say that, right? You can always say that. I do tell people that. I do tell people that. We're out of control. I don't censor you guys. I don't censor you guys. You guys know (laughs) what I expect. And and I hope that you abide by at least uh, some kind of common uh, civility. I don't know if that's even a word. Some civilness. Decorum. We have some decorum. decorum. That's a good word. Decorum. Decorum, gentlemen. I don't don't censor you guys. Speaking of non-censoring, let's... (laughs) I said what I said, and I stick to it. Oh, I'm getting in trouble. I, I, I can already feel it coming. Hey, look, um, hey, look, Adam, how you go? Look, if you're listening to this, don't blame Adam. We're out of control. Yeah, he can't do anything about it. <laughs> this will end up being one of the more entertaining episodes. Let's move on. This with this. Um, this will end up, fortunately, I guess for for G here for G money, as we might call him, end up being a Greg centric episode. Because we're moving right along to the NCAA tournament. We had another segment planned for here. We were going to have a guest on the show. It didn't work out because of a work situation with him. So we hope to have him on next week. We'll keep that a surprise. But we get right back into basketball talk. Um, and there is a massive amount that we that we could get into that if we do, I don't want to spend as much time on each individual little topic um, as we might would normally because we're not a basketball program. But UConn ended up defeating Purdue 75 to 60 to win the second straight NCAA title. Uh, I don't think that two in a row quite demands the dynasty tag yet, but boy, dead gummit, it's getting awfully close. Uh, hold on, before we even get into that, let me reveal this. We've already made it known on, on our Facebook page. I want to say congratulations, our bracket challenge winner, Robert Newsom. Y'all, y'all know who Robert Newsom is. Who, who's, who he's the daddy of. Yeah. Anybody want to put it out there? Dakota, Dakota Newsom. Newsom. Yeah, he's the daddy of Dakota Newsom. You go in the field house, you're going to see Dakota's plaque with a, with his picture hanging up in there. I believe it's a picture from the state championship game. Still, in, I, I ain't been in the field house in a minute. But uh, Robert Newsom won our bracket challenge. Came out of nowhere. He he was still in the top fifteen all the way up and down. But when it came down to Purdue and UConn, the bracket really shaved out. Hey, I jumped from like 23rd place at least into the top 15, so I was happy with that. My wife beat me. Hey, hey let's talk about that. She beat me too, so I I mean, I, I, <laughs> I think I know anybody that. beat me. So. Let's look. I think she beat everybody. I think she beat everybody. Not you. Yeah. She didn't it. beat you. Okay. Well, I have she, yeah, and I and in fact, there. in fact, we all got beat by a man who was a guest for a couple of weeks on the show <laughs> with a bracket called Josh's Uninformed Decisions. Josh yeah. Ingram, who joined us for a couple of, of the playoff games, without looking it up, he was in the top five. He beat all he of us. He was five. He was five. I mean, he – I was he six. Fit, just so you all know, he filled out that bracket like four hours before the tournament started on that Thursday. I'm, I kid you not. And that's why he called it Uninformed Decisions. And he beat all of us. He beat how Drew. Many, he was, many, he uh... was in front of Drew. How many entries did we have? We had up to remember? twenty. I think we had 25. 27. Uh, 27. Was it twenty seven? That's even better. I think I know uh, who finished twenty seventh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, TV, hey, hey, Greg. What, what was your What was your name? G Money. A. G Money. G lost money. I was going to say G <laughs> lost money. No. Yeah. Wait. Let me let me save you on this. You were twenty fourth out of twenty seven. Yeah. I don't know. Who, I don't know who Jabo. 2287 is, but thank you for that. No, yeah, wait a minute. Either, but they probably didn't right, pick after yeah. the first round. Cody <laughs> hey, listen, picks I didn't, one. I did not score a point after after the Sweet 16. I had nobody <laughs> right in the Elite Eight. I had nobody in the Final Four. <laughs> well, well, I will say, say this. Talent. I will say this. I, along with everybody else in the top 10 or 12 or 15, picked UConn. I did pick the winner. No, all the in between. Boom. I was not. I was terrible. Yeah, Purdue winning in the Sweet Sixteen was the last. Was the last one that Greg got right. 
Yeah. <laughs> Greg's, I, Greg's final four was Auburn, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton. Wow. Yeah. And his championship wow. game was Auburn and Houston. Okay. Wow. Houston winning now. Jeez. Houston winning. <laughs> Jeez. So That's if I, I'm pulling it up now, if I remember correctly, had Purdue ended up pulling that out, which if you watch the game at all, you knew that was not going to happen. Had no. Purdue been able to pull that out, uh, and and quite frankly, and I'll get into why I said this in a second, Zach Eady pull a miracle out of his behind. Um, I would have ended up beating everyone, at least in the radio part, in our own private radio uh, bracket. I would have won, ended up winning that. I would have uh, beaten all of the radio guys inside the Red Devil Radio Show 27-man bracket. And I'm also in that locker room sports, um, not to give them a, 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 an unfriendly plug, but there you go. I was in there, and I would have won that one too um, mm. had Purdue ended up winning that. So I ended up getting in good position when all was said and done after being 23rd, 24 after the first round, I think it was. I'm going to ahead, give you a, a Carl B. Mears, my father's um, <laughs> answer to that. If uh, Let's see, how does it go? <laughs> Man, now I just lost it. <laughs> Shoot, it's heck no. Uh, close on the kids. Oh, oh my God, I remember. If that. ifs and buts, if ifs and buts were Katie, were Katie and nuts, nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> it's yes. Fun. Well, uh, let me just tell yes. you who's going to have a merry time. That's Robert Newsom. Congratulations, Robert. You're going to be getting a gift certificate, a uh, dinner for two worth up to 50 bucks to our friends over at Applebee's. Uh, gratuity. And uh, alcoholic beverages are excluded from that. I uh, I know Robert, you're not. I don't. You're not going to have any issue with that, Applebee's. Um, but so uh, we will make sure that you get your gift certificate. Robert has already been in contact with us, and we've talked with him. So we're going to make sure that he gets taken care of. But again, Robert Newsom. And I want to say this too before we move forward with the actual conversation. Twenty-seven entries. Um, now that includes all of us getting in on that as well. But still, for the first time ever doing this and putting an, an, a pretty nice fat prize up there. That's that's big, and I want to say thank you to everyone for playing with us. That tells us yeah. that, A, you're paying attention. B, you're listening to the podcast. Thank you so much. Um, it, it, it absolutely – you guys just don't know it means the world to all of us, not just myself, but it means the world to us to know that you are willing to have some fun with us because that's what it was all about, just having some fun uh, and not taking it too seriously and just enjoying the tournament and being a part of something and just taking a chance. No money no money exchange. We didn't ask you for anything. So we we – that's all it was about was having some fun. So thank you. Now with that, let's get into the tournament conversation because again, UConn defeated Purdue by 15 uh, to win the second straight title game. Before I ask my my question um, that I that we might that some of us might not be ready to have, uh, give me your thoughts on the final four and then the title game. Drew, I'll start with you. You've not talked with us in a moment. Well, uh, it, obviously UConn was the best team headed into the tournament. I think uh, over. I think it was over 30% of people – 30% of the brackets filled out and picked UConn to win. So, um, obviously, they were the favorite. Uh, pretty much just turned out to be um, – nobody could keep up with UConn's runs. I mean, uh, the closest um, – and, and no, I don't think anybody can argue this. The closest was Alabama. They came out in the second half in a close game. Um, kind of, you know – 7-0 run UConn, 7-0 run Bama, 8-0 run UConn, 8-0 run Alabama. And then UConn went on an 8-0 run with about 12 minutes left in the game, 11, 12 minutes left in the game, and Alabama just couldn't hang. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, I mean, to get to the elite, uh, you know, final four, the elite eight, they played Illinois. There was a, they had a, there, that was their run. <laughs> 30 row run 30 to nothing yeah. run i mean that's yeah ridiculous. and that that's it that's pretty much what happened last night come out in the second half purdue can't keep up with uconn's runs and those runs are built on good defense and yeah. and, and high percentage shots that that's right that's it well that's that's exactly jj what mm-hmm. uconn ultimately ended up doing not only to alabama but really to purdue it was halftime adjustments coming out in the second half yes. specifically talking of, of Alabama they were they were forcing Alabama off the three point line after yep. Alabama went 8 of 11 from three point land in the first yep. half had Alabama been able to continue that onslaught in the second half it might have been a different outcome mm-hmm. but they adjusted very well there's a reason why I'm going to I'm going to 
I don't think it's a limb to go out and do this. Dan Hurley's the best coach in college basketball right now. Period. Bar none. There's nobody even even close to sniffing his his, his coattail. Um, and he knows it. And he knows it. Yeah, um, yeah, he does. <laughs> hey, Dave, listen. If you hit if you hit eight <laughs> but, threes and a half and are still losing by four, you're in trouble. Yeah, that's but he, exactly. he did the same thing to Purdue. And in his post game comments, JJ, he said something that we all knew. They talked about it in the commentary, uh, like eight minutes into the first half. The plan was let Edie get all he wants. If he goes off for forty, fine, let him yeah. do it. It's the other four guys we got to keep from beating us. And sure yeah. as shooting, Purdue had one, one, one made three pointer that whole stinking game. I think only yeah. what three attempts. UConn made the adjustments yeah. in the second half. That's what decided that Alabama game. That's what decided the national championship. All right, so so I want I want to I wanna talk about that. I think that there's philosophies regarding teams and your defensive approach, and I think we talked about that last week, and you just mentioned it. You, if you have a team and Purdue's offense centered completely on Zach Eady, which it worked all year long, worked all year long. So here's here's some you know, and I I think I texted you guys during the during the 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 game. Game and Purdue's guards, and I'll go a little bit further. Even the other four guy, uh, the other two guys, the small forward and power forward, they're they're not very good. They were okay. They completely shut them down. So get this: yeah. Zach Eady had thirty-seven points. He had thirty-seven out of their sixty points. There was only one other person in double figures, and he had twelve points. Uh, Fletcher Lawyer, one of the starting guards, had zero points. Uh, and then the Braden Smith was the only other person who was the point guard. Is the only other person in double figures. They their defense defense wins championships. So I want to say yes, their defense was phenomenal. Alabama and Drew said it. Alabama hit eight three pointers in the first half. I knew we were in trouble because we were still trailing. Alabama still was still trailing the ball game. I knew it's going to be a long shot for us to win. Yeah. But if you look on the other hand and you look at their stats, they had 18 assists. What does that tell me? When I see 18 assists, what I believe and I see and I watch the game is there was a lot of ball movement. They moved the ball. They have offensive sets, half-court sets that they execute. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Purdue's a good defensive team as well, but they ran those offensive sets, and it puts a strain on a defense when you have to endure and you have to defend through screens and multiple screens and cuts. And that that's that's always been my argument with Alabama is is it we got to do more than screen and roll, and then try to kick it out. So sometimes a, a good off I, uh, uh, UConn runs great offensive sets. They had one, two, three, four guys in double figures scoring and 18-plus assists. Everything else was basically even. Shooting percentage, yes, it's pretty even. Turnovers, pretty even. That's why UConn's the best team in the country. I knew it going in. I was actually surprised that Alabama played as well as they did, and credit to Alabama, to our players, and to Coach Oates. Uh, for for getting for them being able to kind of get locked in, I will say this on Alabama's behalf, and we've said it all year. Greg said it a lot. It sure would have been nice to have Charles Bediaco in the middle yeah. there in that game. Yeah. So I will say this, and I'm gonna shut up. Alabama clinging was a lot for Alabama. He's athletic. He's more athletic than Edie. He get even though Edie scored thirty seven points, he still gave him trouble. He still contended. Alabama did not challenge, and I know they're getting it swatted. He blocked multiple shots against Alabama. I get that. Layups are our first priority. That's our first shot. That's our opportunity. That's what we want. Layups and short. All right, they did nothing. To, to challenge him, when they saw him in the lane, they immediately left. They didn't try to get into him. They didn't try to body him. 
They didn't try to draw fouls. I get it. You're going to get your shot blocked sometimes, and they, he blocked several. But you got – look, the, the spectacular play for me was Nelson <laughs> making that dunk uh, <laughs> over 80. But he challenged him. Yeah. I'm not saying – but look, nobody likes to get their shot blocked. I'm saying we should have challenged him. I'm also saying that Nick Pringle was a liability in this game because he has no outside ability to score, and he acted like he didn't know what to do with the ball out yeah. on, out on the floor. He couldn't that let Kling, no, that let Klingon stay in the lane and protect the rim. When if they would have put you know, again, I'm not a coach, obviously. But I, my thought process was put Stevenson or even go small, put Stevenson out there who can shoot the three. That forces Klingon to have to respect that three-point shot and come out of that lane, which in turn opens up driving opportunities for Alabama. That's the only thing. That's I, why Pringle didn't start the second uh, half. Yeah, but – but it, but we really didn't get the ball to Stevenson, right. and and he didn't shoot it and force Klingon. Okay, I got to respect this guy's shot or and whoever. After after the first, I don't know, two or three minutes, I don't think we got it to Grant Nelson enough either. No, I agree with that. So again, not being, you know, I've been super critical all year. I think Alabama did fantastic considering replacing three coaches, replacing all, all but three players from last year's team. Uh, so yeah, but I, that's the only thing I could see. And you know, UConn had the ability to, they had a big to challenge Edie, uh, pull him out of the off the you know, out of the lane a little bit. So, you know, again, great final four. Conspiracy theorists all are all abounding that they wanted those number <laughs> one seeds to meet and all that. And, you know, there's things that you look at and it makes you scratch your head. Uh, back to – let's talk about the women's Final Four. Foul call uh, screen against UConn because they wanted Caitlin, Caitlin oh, Clark JJ, in the you finals. Don't you don't want to uh, I, I mean, look I, look, I saw screenshots, slow motion, and it, it looked more like an offensive foul than what it did in real time. I'm telling you that was a garbage call at the end of the game. Because they wanted Caitlin Clark in the finals to play South Carolina. And look, I love Caitlin Clark. I think that our team was, she le- elevated them. But at the end of the day, the Gamecocks are too much. They're just too yeah, good. Yeah, did, didn't you just get too on good. a conspiracy theorist right before that? I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, there's people that think that. With what happened, it makes you wonder. It, it makes you know. Sounds there's like a, you're one of them. Th- there was a there was a song back in the nineties <laughs> that said it was things that make you go, make you go, and that's exactly yeah. what it, what it'll make you do. And I'm yeah, shutting up. I, I have I have changed my mind on that. By the way, JJ, I don't think it's hashtag Sanford Block. I I, I got to admit, I believe yeah. it. I believe after watching it several times, I'm more convinced that. I, I don't like the fact that the player forced the official to make that call. I'll say it like that. The player forced the official to make that call. I, I think it was I a agree. correct call. Uh, there was a there was a man on this panel, going back to the men's side of the bracket, who had a different experience with the Final Four than, than the other <laughs> three of us who had to sit on our behinds at our brother-in-law's house or in a hotel or at girlfriends or at a bar or wherever we were to watch this because somebody got to actually sit whether it was uh, on the front row or in the rafters, got to actually be in Glendale, Arizona at State Farm Stadium, and that would be the man wearing the Alabama hat in Greg Mears. Greg, first of all, how was the trip? Listen, I can tell you guys that it was worth every penny penny of it, and I recommend if and when we go back again that we make a a pack that we're all going to go somehow. (laughs) It was was phenomenal, guys. It was, I mean, even, even with the loss, it was so much fun. Uh, I can't begin to tell you how much, what it was like sitting there going, I can't believe I'm about to watch Alabama, you know, playing a Final Four. And you're sitting there and you're watching, and then your next thought is, don't let Purdue or don't let uh, UConn come out and go on like an 18-0 run to start the game. And so when yeah. we came out hot and it, and it was a great first half, you know, then you're sitting there going, well, you know, I didn't buy tickets to the championship game. Wonder how much I can get them for. You know, can I get a room? Can I keep the room? It's your fault, Greg. It's your fault. We yeah. lost. <laughs> Now, I thought that was a way to get us to win, was not have tickets. But listen, <laughs> I, it's, 
you know, you go to a football game and there's 80, 90, 100,000 in the stands and you don't think anything of it. You go to a basketball game and there's 74,000 people watching it. The atmosphere was fantastic. Now, again, we were the newbies. So you got Purdue people freaking everywhere. Everybody in West Lafayette must have been at that game. And then UConn right behind them, man. Place yeah. was packed with UConn. North Carolina State and Alabama, kind of hard to tell because they sat us both on the same side and everybody's in red. But I mean, you can't believe how loud that stadium could get either. With just one of the one of the four teams that are there doing something right, man. UConn, Purdue, they're going crazy. Yeah, and uh, people so, don't you know, forget you know, this the, is where the Arizona Cardinals play in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. The student section at Alabama, it was such a hard trip out there for the students that they actually got Arizona State units and gave uh, students and gave them uh, Alabama gear. That's really? where our student section was. It. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't fill it up. You know, it's just such a like I said, it was worth it. Now, logistic wise, man, it was going out there wasn't bad. <laughs> Coming back, I was in an airport <laughs> or on an airplane yesterday for 14 hours trying to get back home. <laughs> so I got to the airport at six o'clock Pacific time. I landed in Atlanta and it was eight o'clock in the morning and daylight out. Heck, so that hey, was even, a little tough. even getting out of Alabama to go out there was a little bit, little bit of a rough start, wasn't it? Well, I got trapped in an elevator that morning. So, yeah, it was a little tough. <laughs> Not a good, I knew it. Not a good omen. But I'm Loving an like, elevator. <laughs> Living yeah, it up. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, Self-love. Self I was by myself. <laughs> so, let, let, let me. Listen. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Y'all ask questions because, I mean, it was it just. Well, I, and I, first I, off, I was, Phoenix is gorgeous city, too, by the way. Just fantastic city. Yeah, we when we went out to the canyon uh, last year, we, we stayed um, about an hour and a half, close to two hours, just north of, of Phoenix and had thought about going down Flagstaff and, and or it Sedona. Out. yeah we stayed up near flagstaff yeah. um oh, i think we ventured through sedona too at what one point i think um but uh i, I want to go i, I want to go back sort of to a point that jj made and, and and greg you can answer this a little better everybody knows um of course that nate oats got out coached in the second half I, as an alabama fan I'm, I'm i'm willing to admit that we we, we we just got out coached. We didn't adjust well. We knew that we and, – and you would think that Nate Oates, knowing being good friends with, with Coach Hurley, would know that he's going to make all those kinds of adjustments. Um, Coach Hurley also out coached uh, Coach Painter from Purdue in a massive hey, way man. because while, per, while Edie goes off for 37, as I mentioned before, it was a part of UConn's game plan to allow Edie uh -huh. to get 30-plus points. He, he admitted to that. Excuse me. In the post game, he admitted to that that we knew going in we were going to let him. We were just going to let him. So to me, that's a part of the coaching that that come with it. We can see it on TV, um, and 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 get one feeling about it. Greg, seeing it in person, you might end up getting a totally different feeling. Specifically, because you were there for you were there for both Final Four games. Not just, yeah. you weren't there for the championship. The uh, what is what was that like to to watch? And I hate to say it, but it's just a, a, a the fact. What what was your feeling like watching Alabama get out coached, uh, specifically from halftime into the second half? How did you feel? What did you see? Well, it goes so it goes so quick that you can't really tell that you're getting out coached at that point in time. As much as you can tell that UConn was just had better athletes. That's what I picked yeah. up on. Is like you know, I'm sitting there thinking it's been. 14, 15 years since somebody repeated, and you watch them play, and you go, "Yeah, these guys are these guys are cut above," which all comes mm -hmm. from coaching in the first place. But you know, you couldn't you couldn't really tell. Uh, but I, what you could tell, the biggest thing I could tell that they were getting their game plan wasn't working is I don't think I've ever seen. I know I haven't this year. Alabama take so many six foot, seven foot shots. The yeah. shot that he hates the most, yes. and we were we yes. were having to take those because of. You know what? Uh, what Hurley yeah. had done to us on defense chased us off that three point line, afraid to challenge underneath, and so all of a sudden you've got us shooting shots that that we don't shoot, and that yeah. was the biggest key. You could see that right away in the second half. I, I think coaching aside, when you have a big like Klingon, athletic big man who could recover really well, I think that makes that game plan a lot easier. Yeah. That Hurley put in. Than if he had a six eight guy that didn't have that yeah. ability uh, to challenge, so it does make it easier. That and that's what I've been saying all along. Yeah. And and Klingon will go top ten NBA draft. Yeah. Well, and, and, and another thing too with that, I think Oates, 
you know, game plan looked to me obviously like it. The first, it was they were collapsing on Kling, and, and they're going to let they take some outside shots. Well, that backfired pretty quick because that, that was a mistake. Like four in a row, yeah. So you had to yeah. come out of what's your game plan. You think it's a great game plan, and it looks like it's going to, and then all of a sudden, you know, this one guy, I think, well, who was at number four, wasn't it, was so hot hitting those yes. threes there at the beginning. Yeah. So, again, you see yeah. that, and you go, okay, it's time to adjust real quick. Right. Well, and then, and then Oates, Oates going, you know, he's an analytics guy, so he knew, okay, this guy shoots the lowest percentage, blah, yeah. blah, blah. We're going to help off. And, and, you know, sometimes you gamble, and sometimes kids rise to the occasion. And and I'm I'm got, I hate to bring up five basketball again, but you know I, I I go back to the regionals against Plainview, and you know they they decided they weren't going to guard Xavier Wirtz on the perimeter, and you know traditionally he hadn't shot that very well from the outside, right? He made them pay big time in that game. You know he he shot at, he shot out of his mind, and sometimes kids just get in a zone, and 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 that's what that kid did. And it completely disrupted Nate's uh, Coach Oates' game plan. Speaking going of somebody into. else that'll go top ten in the NBA draft, both of those guys. Yeah, will. Yeah, so, they will. yeah. So let me let me get into this part here. I'm going to give you two polls: <clears throat> the AP poll, top twenty-five, the final AP poll of the of the season, which obviously doesn't matter. But UConn and Purdue one and two, Alabama number three, Houston four. Now. Via depending on which way you look at it, the ESPN app has has uh, Alabama and Houston tied for third, but they have Alabama listed first. But in the coach in the coaches poll, UConn, Purdue, Houston, Alabama, Houston third, Alabama fourth. Now, I, I bring that to the attention just because I want to ask a question here that that some folks aren't ready to have. After watching both UConn play Purdue and UConn play Alabama. And not in that order, obviously. Is Alabama the second best team of the Final Four? I know Alabama didn't play him for the championship, but that's only because of the way the bracket shook out. Of, well, is Alabama the up. second best team? Of after the watching four? what UConn did, of the Final Four, after watching what UConn did to Purdue and the way Purdue, it was it was virtually the Zach Eady show for Purdue, and that's all they had. If it wasn't for Eady, they wouldn't even be in the game. What what is Alabama? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, yeah, we gave UConn a better game, but I don't think with a seven four guy down there that we would beat Purdue either with our our guys. Uh, you know, they played fantastic, and I, I love what they well, did. Well, hold on, but, let me. I mean, I, it, I'll say this: I know Alabama played Purdue in the non conference very early. It was like game four, game five. It was one of those three games yeah. in a row where we played top 10 teams and lost all three games by like 80 points or less in each one. But I think coming a long way, what Alabama had done throughout the season, in spite of that skit at the end of the year, going into the SEC tournament, I agree with Nate Oates that losing that first round of the SEC tournament ended up being the best thing for Alabama going into the NCAA tournament with the way that they were able to turn things on. As JJ mentioned a moment ago, a, a switch flipped and they got, they, they got on their defensive high horse and played much better. Was Alabama? I mean, would Alabama have won a rematch with Purdue? Mm. Yeah, can I answer right there? Yeah, uh, I, I'm, go I'm going to disagree with Greg a little bit, only because of what you just said. They played Purdue earlier. I don't think we were playing our best defense. I don't think we were at our best at that point. Now Purdue got better, obviously, as well. Uh, I do think at this point. Eighty scores forty five. He shut everybody <laughs> else down. He's not going to score outscore Alabama by himself. Uh, now a lot of a lot of Alabama. What Alabama does is contingent on how well they shoot, and sometimes that can be problematic. If Alabama shoots a normal percentage, they play defense the way they have to close the year. Zach Eady may have a career day. I think Alabama's right in the game. I think. I think it's close, to be honest I'm, with you. I'm with you. I think Alabama plays either of the two teams in the Final Four. You're talking about Alabama and the Natty. Just yeah. in this instance, I'm not, you know. Do I think Alabama's probably the the best, one of the, you know, two best, the top two best or, you know. Yeah. Second best team in the whole tournament? No, probably not. No, I, I really, hey, Luke. I really do think Houston would have beat NC State. 
had Houston's Jamal Shedd is his name. Jamal Shedd. If he would have not gotten hurt against Duke, I think they win that game against Duke, and I think they probably beat NC State. So, um, that I, I I'll agree with that one in the AP poll and the coaches poll. Um, they're right there with Alabama, but I do think Alabama plays NC State or Purdue. I think they probably beat them. So, so I would go as far as to say, and we're sitting here talking how, how, if Alabama's the second or third best team in the country. Heck, I'm just glad that they're in the conversation in the top five. I don't care if they're, I don't care if they're eight. Look, it's been a long time since we've been able to talk about Alabama. Yeah, since uh, Nate Oates got there, so yeah, I'm really thankful to to be have them in that conversation to have Nate Oates. Although it scares us to death to have a Nate Oates name on list yeah. uh, to replace certain coaches. So, but you know what? Uh, With that. I, I think we're safe now until that Michigan State job comes open. If you turn down yeah, Kentucky, yeah. Michigan State's going to be the next one that if uh, Izzo retires, yeah. I'm be going, Ugh, come yeah. on, the only, And the only reason it, that would be is because it, it allows him to go home. That, that, yeah. that yeah. would be it. That's the only hey, thing that one other thing, would have over Alabama. One other thing I want to say go about ahead. the whole tournament or, or the Final Four, the other thing that you worry about when you go, man, that moment was not too big for that team. No, it was not. No. You know, I was worried. You worry that, okay, we got to the final four. Woohoo, great. That's our job's done. But yeah. they were not, man. They wanted, they went out there and they wanted to win it all. And I'm not saying they couldn't beat Purdue by any means. I'm just saying, you know, Purdue was, to me, was probably the second best team. I think no way in the world Alabama wasn't the third best. They could have given anybody a run for their money the way they were playing at the end. Yeah. Right. But they just, yes. it was fantastic to see them go out and truly, truly compete, not just yeah. be yeah. there. Not just well, getting yes. beat by thirty. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to echo that sentiment and say this before we move on. When when we won and beat Clemson in the Elite Eight to get to the Final Four, I was with Drew. In fact, I watched both the Elite Eight and the Final Four game with <laughs> Drew. Um, and after after we won that, you guys saw the video. I know you guys saw me go nuts and and have to be quiet in the process because of, <laughs> of Baby Clara. Um. In the fall, taking a chest bump, by the way. That's going to be a hashtag line, by the way. Don't chest bump if you don't mean it, Drew. Um, <laughs> I look, but I, I looked at him and I said, you know what? Here's your prize. You get UConn. Great. Wonderful. And I told Drew, I said, you know what, man? We're, we're, we're going to lose. I, 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 I just, I, I, I do want to be optimistic, but you, this is UConn's tournament. It's going to take a monster effort. And boy, did, did Alabama give a monster effort against UConn. We've, we've, we've hit on that. But at the end of the day, I told him, I said, even if we lose that Final Four game, I am content. I am happy. Because I yes. saw my team reach a peak that has never been reached before in Alabama. That I love yeah. basketball. I said it last week. Basketball is my second favorite sport. It's close to football. I love it. I'm not as emotionally invested in it like you are, Greg, um, because I, I just I don't have that tie to Alabama like you do. My closest tie is my sister went there for four years and was in the million dollar band, but uh, and and did the pet band for Alabama basketball. But I was I'm content, and and with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna address someone in particular with this comment before I shut up and move on. Let me take this off. Hang on. That right there. <laughs> That right there, not a waste of money, pal. You know who you are. Not a waste of money. I am dead gum proud. Let me say this again, and I think I can speak for all four of us on, on here tonight. I am dang proud of the team that represents that A right there, of what they did in that tournament after all the crap that even we said, let's be frank, even we said as a crew and, and the doubt that we had, I was dang proud to be proven wrong. I was dang proud of the character, of the toughness, of the grit, the tenacity, the chemistry that 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 developed, and the selflessness that th that they showed in that tournament. Dead gummit, I'm proud of the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm proud of Nate Oates, and I'm proud to dead gummit say we've got a basketball coach in Alabama that turned <laughs> down big freaking Blue Nation. Hey. I never thought I'd yeah. see that. I oh, never oh. thought I'd see it. I'll add to that. When's the last time his team made a Final Four? That, exactly. Exactly. I was I mean, negative five. 
<laughs> yes. So 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 they want to refer to themselves as elite. And so Kentucky fans, I think some one of you guys texted today. Kentucky fans think of themselves so kind of some similar to the way Alabama fans. The only difference is is Kentucky doesn't have near the the championships to to show for it over the last twenty years that Alabama does in football. And so that you know, it's like I can remember when you know when Tennessee fired Phil Fulmer. Yes, he won a national championship, and you see what a dumpster fire that was for for years. But they still thought of themselves as an elite SEC program when in reality they're not. And you can say whatever you want to say. I think Cal's a good coach. And and I think he's going to recruit talent. And I think he's going to win at Arkansas. But I think that culture, your boosters, your fan base, mm-hmm. they I think they contribute. They're, you're not elite anymore. You're If you can't get out of the first round and you lose to a 16 seed, or you can't do that for years, you're not elite. I'm sorry. I don't care what Adolph Rupp did <laughs> back years ago. You're not elite, just like UCLA, as good as they were back in the day with John Wooden. They're not elite. And so well, Kentucky Kentucky fans, you're not elite. <laughs> well, three years ago, they lost to who? St. Peter's. Then they didn't even make yes. the tournament. Then this year, they lose yep. to Oakland. Come on, man. They're not elite. Let Jack Golke be the one that ruined your program. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Golke. I, I'm going to say uh, they're not elite. I won't take blue no. blood status away because Alabama's not a blue blood in basketball. Blue blood is a basketball term. You can coin that to football if you want, but it's a basketball term. There's only select few teams in college basketball that get that mantra as being blue bloods. Auburn, you ain't yeah. one of them. Just because you suck <laughs> the in the color wheel, just because you get one good year. Go back and watch before ten years ago, before your before your uh, pearl got there. Uh, why? Let's look at it after. Hey, hey, yeah, that's, that's what, what I was about, about to say. Final four. Yeah, let's I mean, let's that, compare well, records. Well, well, let's... hold on. I'm just I'm I'm going to go back to pre Bruce Pearl. They were the butt of many a joke uh, of basketball no. in the SEC. So I'm I'm thinking specifically just in my lifetime of guys like Tony Barbie. Uh, you know, oh gosh, doesn't work. You're not a blue mm. blood. I'm sorry. Get over it. We're not blue bloods either. This team right here, we're not. No, we're not claiming. If we, if we, we're not even new money. The only way we we become a basketball blue blood at Alabama is if we win like eight of the next ten NCAA championships and just make one big massive dynasty that'll never be seen again. Uh, And it ain't gonna happen. Then we're we're just new money. We're not blue bloods. We're new money. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. All right, let's move forward. Uh, and and we're not going to have a ten minutes of crap. You can kind of consider some of that our ten minutes of crap. It is. <laughs> um, Greg, I'm giving you the floor again. Where was Greg? The t-shirt segment because yes. not only getting to go out to Arizona for the Final Four, but while I, while my wife and I were at the doctor and whatever these other knuckleheads were doing, we were all getting text messages from you, and you were posting to Facebook about a couple of three or four different high schools you ventured out to. So. Tell us about where you – let's start – well, let's start with the T-shirt. Is the T-shirt a part of where you went? No, because you find out very quickly that high school sports, especially football in Arizona, is not that big a deal. Really? So I went to all these places. I could not find one shirt. All right? No, nobody had T-shirts so like that, that. that. So that's why you didn't ask us if we wanted one. Yeah, hey, so yeah wait, there was nothing. Now, I am going to order. If I went to that school and I can order one, I will order. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't, like I said, I don't just order shirts out there. So, so great. real quick, we'll do my shirt. Yeah, go let's, ahead. Yeah, let, let's, let's. No, I want to ask because even Dollar General has local high school team shirts. <laughs> they did not. Though. That, no, that, so that ought to tell you. Dollar General, <laughs> CVS, Walmart, Kroger, Family Dollar, nothing. If you, you weren't in Phoenix Sun. You, yeah. You weren't an yeah, Arkansas. If you wanted a Phoenix Sun, Phoenix Sun, Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, there was a few <laughs> with the. Hey, listen, even with the ASU right there, there was very little ASU Arizona State paraphernalia. Mm. No, respect. man, it was all pro. No, respect. all pro, none at mm. all. And I mean, so when I went to the first one, the Vista Valley Monsoon, which is one that I seeked out. That was one I definitely even before I went out there, I was like, I'm going, I'm going. This is close enough. I'm gonna go there. There was a Walmart across the street, and I was like. Hot damn! I am getting a shirt. That's going to be the Vista Valley, the Vista Valley Monsoon. Went in there. They didn't have 
crap. I mean, <laughs> but uh, and again, though, some beautiful, beautiful settings, beautiful stadiums. Oh, yeah. A uh, much smaller scale, obviously, than two weeks ago when I was out in Texas. These look more like Alabama stadiums. If you were a 5A, you know, it probably sat four or 5,000 yeah. people at the most. Um, Normal-looking press boxes, they weren't all four or five stories high. But some of the settings, I mean, that one, so the Sedona yes. that you were talking about where you stayed at or went through, yeah. the, uh, they were the Red Rock, yeah. Sedona yeah, yeah, Red yeah, Rock yeah, Scorpions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and in the background was the Red Rocks. Gorgeous, Beautiful. gorgeous facility, gorgeous stadium. Uh, then, I, I, like I said, I went to the Villa or the Valley Vista Monsoon. I went to uh, the uh, Cesar Chavez Champions, which I didn't get any pictures oh. of that one. Uh, there was another one out there. It was a little bit too far away, but the uh, uh, the uh, Gila Valley Gila Monsters. And uh, and the one I'm, I'm going when I go back, I'm getting this one. It's the Yuma Criminals. They are oh, right, God, by the, right by the right the, the federal the, the, wait, 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 wait. So, Say that again. Yuma Criminals. <laughs> Cri criminals. Criminals. Yeah, they, they the high school is right by. Like you were talking, but it's by. A, I think it's a federal. It's either the state prison or federal prison. <laughs> oh my so God! They are. They're the criminals. <laughs> I'm. I'm not scheduling those guys. You can call me a coward if you want to. <laughs> oh. Now, for where my shirt actually is, that is Conway, Arkansas, Wampus Cats. I looked up what a Wampus Cat is. It really doesn't say too much about them. Good, very good high school program, though. They've gone deep in the playoffs the last three or four years. Uh, unfortunately for them, there's a team up there in the better, little bit bigger class, uh, kind of like Fife, that wins it every year. So, uh they, they bow out in the third round pretty much every time. But uh, Conway Waffles like, Cats. Yeah, go ahead. Let, let's, you can say is it. it. Is it similar to Fort Payne playing Gardendale in the third round? Is that, is that what you're talking like about? That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're either going to lose to Bryant or Fayetteville <laughs> every year. Bryant's a fantastic <laughs> program up there. Oh, my God. You knew where I was going with that, didn't you, I knew. <laughs> Let's go Rockets. <laughs> All right, you've got me wanting to uh, – I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, ask the G word not not G money I'm gonna ask Google so hey Google yeah what is a wampus cat let's see oh she's not talking it says the wampus cat what? is a oh, cat like oh. creature in American folklore that varies widely in appearance ranging from frightful to comical depending on region this is frightful he's bad. <laughs> so they just wanted to they just wanted to basically include all cats in general right yeah we're yeah. just gonna call them wampus cats <laughs> wild wampus cats cat. yeah black cats bobcats bobcats <laughs> i thought you were gonna look up the uh, yuma criminals to see what their logo looks like it's cool hey 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 hey, hey. <laughs> oh my gosh i'm gonna the yuma see. criminals high school Yuma High School. Let's see. I can't believe there's not a public outrage over that. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh nice, my, huh? Oh, oh, my. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I gotta make don't, big don't tell me it's somebody in a ski mask. <laughs> no, no. no. From it. This, oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put this up to the screen. This thing, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But oh my god! It literally <laughs> says "criminal pride." Criminal pride, baby. No, criminal that pride. can't. That can't be real. Thing. It is. It is. I swear. Oh <laughs> that guy looks like he's been in a bar fight. By the way, they own that logo. <laughs> That's crazy. He's been uh, <laughs> unbelievable. He was in Shawshank fighting off the ladies, is what it was. <laughs> Put me in the hole. the ladies. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I knew Andy DeFrank. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's this hilarious. This might end up being I, one of I, the best episodes we've ever had. I'm just I saying. Still, I still can't believe criminals. Wow. <laughs> Criminal about, pride, hey, baby. It, it, Hey, is Coach Bitterfield still looking for a game? <laughs> I mean, can we play the criminals? Uh, Red Devils and criminals sounds like a good matchup. Seems like uh, we can't get this... anybody in the state of Alabama to play us. So, yeah. I mean... Hey, where's South Pittsburgh at? Come on, South Pittsburgh. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> come on down to Alabama, or we'll come to you. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we have thoroughly enjoyed. I have thoroughly enjoyed this one. I, I'll say it again. May end up being one of the best episodes we've ever done. I we've had a lot of laughs in this one. Uh, let Let's move on to the final segment here of what's upcoming at five. We've we've had a few things get shuffled around. Um, so first, I want to tell you that after delaying the opening due to testing at the school, the annual FFA greenhouse sale is beginning today uh, on this Thursday as we drop it. It was supposed to begin on the 8th. They moved it to the 11th because of like uh, SAT testing and that kind of thing. So that it's, it's just getting started on the 11th. Um, different types of ferns and tomatoes and pepper plants are up for sale along with mosquito and alloy plants. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, about 4,000 plants are up for sale. So go get them while you can. Find out more information on the Fife High School and Red Devil Radio Show Facebook pages. You might have to dig back a few swipe your finger a few times go back and see them but they are there on both of the facebook pages drew uh so any upcoming junior or senior um is is encouraged to take advantage of the act summer boot camp this is to help prepare uh, the students for taking the act um listen it matters i know we don't like it <laughs> it is what it is um but classes will be held weekly in july beginning on the first um, registration will open men, Wednesday, May 1st. So there, it's limited spots. Um, forms can be picked up in the high school office. Um, class will be taught by Ms. Durham. Um, you can find out more info um, by visiting the Five High School uh, Facebook page and the Red Devil Radio Show Facebook page. We'll make sure to share that out there for you guys. Highly encouraged. Big time. Mm -hmm. JJ? All right, so five softball is scheduled to have a matchup with Sand Rock at home tonight. I guess that's the night of this drop, uh, with the first pitch being at 4.30. And uh, then they will gear up to play in the county tournament this weekend. Uh, varsity baseball uh, is also getting ready to play in the county tournament. And they will actually head to Eider on uh, Friday and Saturday for that but only if they're able to play their area games uh, against Pisgah, which is really important because that's going to determine the area standings. Uh, before, and then they'll return home on Monday uh, to play Brindley Mountain and then close out the regular season Tuesday, and that would be next Tuesday at home versus Woodville. So basically, uh, while we're recording right now uh, on Tuesday, if they're able to play the Tuesday and Wednesday series with Pisgah, they will play in the county championship or play in the county tournament. If not, they will not play in the tournament, and instead they're going to play Pisgah to get those area games in because they're the most important thing to decide uh, the area standing. So uh, baseball gets kind of complicated, but, uh, you know, area games supersede county county games and again we're working real hard to get those games in um, before the end of the season or before the end of school my goodness school will be out in just a short period of time yeah like seven weeks six or seven weeks so uh, I, I, I did i did reach out earlier uh before we recorded just to make sure i had all of that information right and was <clears> told uh basically what jj said was all of this is predicated on that on that pisgah series because they play pit they're supposed to play pisgah tonight as as we're recording and then play them again on Wednesday as part yeah. of a doubleheader. So three games in two days with Pisgah, one game taking place at Pisgah, the other two at Fife. And uh, the weather is, is a big factor uh, and probably raining them out, just to be frank. I don't, I can't confirm nor deny that. Um, mm -hmm. But if you need to know, ask a baseball player, uh, reach out to Coach Thomas and also reach out to the girls in, in softball because they may be in a, in a similar predicament. I'm unsure of that. I didn't hear back on the softball side, um, but they may be in a similar predicament there. But we, we just want to encourage you to be a part of them, period. Uh, whether they're playing in the county tournaments yeah. or whether they're playing area games, yeah. go be a part of it. Go watch them. We're going to try and get out there and support them as well as support our friends over at Froggy Free Shaved Ice who bring us each and every podcast each and every week. You already know, folks, what all they provide for you. I ain't got to tell you, man. I, I'll tell you what. We need to get them on here. They may be – they that. we need to – Greg, we need to talk with Miss Johnson. We need to talk with LaVon, see if we can get them on here with, with, with <laughs> Carolyn, see if we can get them on for five minutes. Or we might just go stick a camera in their face because nobody hey, JJ, can promote their business like they do. I bet you you'd have no problem getting Carolyn on here. No, no, no absolutely not. She'll, she'll talk. 
Chill talk. No. <laughs> So, so, yeah. Now, LeVon, LeVon might not have much to say, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check that. I'll try tomorrow. I should see one of them tomorrow, yeah. probably. Well, I'll say That's this. the difference difference in an English teacher and a gym teacher. Yeah. <laughs> English, English teacher, much more articulate. I'll, I'll say, I, will say, I will say this. She has been not only as Froggy Freaks has been the biggest supporter and uh, in, in being our title sponsor, but a thank you. We were talking, you know, we addressed the, the folks, our listeners early on. A huge thank you to Miss Johnson specifically because I see her every day after after we drop a, an episode for the next four or five days, at least once a day. She is sharing that podcast <laughs> episode yeah. and making sure that it gets she is yep. doing her part. Now, whether it's to promote I, her own st- <laughs> stuff or not, what I don't care. We're, we're along it for the ride. Matter. So it don't yeah, matter. Yeah. We, we're we're all in this together. So I'm looking. I'm looking at it every day. Going, wait, did we do something new today? That I hadn't seen yet. <laughs> right. What, what did What did I say? You You are getting old. You remember what you said, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm thankful she hasn't stepped corrected. in at this podcast. I'll just step in it some more. But I'm anyway. just thankful she hasn't corrected us on our grammar or, uh, <laughs> or any of oh, that. She has. You just hadn't heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Miss Johnson. You did a great job teaching me, but I, you know, I've, I've regressed. <laughs> You're still a country boy. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> a good old country boy. Hey, folks, again, Froggy Freeze. Let me give you the number because we we sit here, we joke, we have fun, but but folks, I tell you what, they're willing to do the same with you in person as they serve you a nice, cool treat. It's 256-717-7239. Again, 256-717-7239. Uh, it's funny. I actually took their number down on a piece of paper at the station, and then it got shuffled up in some other papers I got. And when I was cleaning up uh, my office earlier today, I found that paper. And for a moment, I went, why don't I know that number, 7239? I went, oh, yeah, froggy free. So I've got them all over the place. I know who I need to get in contact with if I ever need them for anything. Folks, you do too. you got no excuse. Give them a call, 256-717-7239. Drew? Not her day. Not her day. Not her day. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get in trouble. Greg, Drew, JJ, boys, it has been an honor. You got any final thoughts? We normally don't do final thoughts, but we've had a good time. Any final thoughts on this? Now, for me, I, look, I just appreciate you guys. And, and again, we get we'll get a little sentimental, but I appreciate you guys. I love uh, I, I like the fact that we can just sit here and talk, talk about sports and in and, and different aspects and have a good time and a laugh. And uh, hopefully the people that listen to our to this podcast, hopefully they get a little bit of the same, yeah. uh, you know, being able to listen. I get a girl, a lot of enjoyment from the podcast that I listen to. Uh, I mean, I'm look, I'm big Pat McAfee fan because uh, he covers wrestling and sports and stuff. And I laugh every day. And I think it's good medicine. As the Bible says, it's good. It's good for the soul. It's good medicine. It's good for you. Uh, to laugh, and we got a lot of negativity. So take the time, listen, laugh with us, and uh, you know I think you, the world would be a better place if more people were laughing. <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts? Now, like I said, boys, we get another chance. You go back to the final four. You got to go. We got to make a I, make a some kind because I mean it's it's worth every penny I spent. I mean, and it really wasn't that bad either. By the way, yeah. I, Drew can attest to this. I was asking my wife uh, on Saturday. <laughs> I love <laughs> Alabama I wins tonight. Can I leave tomorrow and 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 fly out? I, I even asked Greg. Y'all y'all yeah. saw the text. What Greg? What airline did you yeah. use? I, I looked. I, I did look. Yeah, but if I, I, I if I was using the airline Greg used, if I was as confident as Greg was, then. Uh, I was asking my bank account, and it said no. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, look, I got, I got, I got my wallet out. And said, "Hey, could I go?" And my wallet said no. So I just put it down and said, "Forget it." <laughs> That's who you're married to right now, right? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, uh, that's the per- that's the permission that I need at nah, this point. Yeah. That's when you get your wallet back. When you get that divorce, that might be empty, but at least you get it back. <laughs> oh, my. Hey. Are you still hey, recording you... this? <laughs> hey, let's say, let's edit this last part in the in the spirit of I've got the, <laughs> never mind. Oh boy, I've got half a month right. to edit any of this. I'm just letting you know. Oh, it yeah, look, been, it is it what it is. Joy, it has been a pleasure. Let's do this again next week. Hopefully, we are able to get Josh on with us. Uh, you remember Josh Ingram from being on with us in some of our playoff games towards the end of the year. 
He'll provide a unique perspective on this whole Fife versus everybody else kind of thing and how they do things because he played at the at the 5A level and the 1A level going from Scottsboro to Woodville. So he gets a he, he has a little bit of a unique perspective. So we hope he gets to join us next week. For Drew, Greg, and JJ, I'm Adam Ward saying so long, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this one. Share it with your friends. Share it with your enemies and everybody else that you know. And if you like something, even if you don't like something, comment. Let us know what you think. Tell us how you feel. We'll, we we can handle it. We promise. We're we're only thin skinned to a degree. I promise. We we can handle it. Okay, <laughs> we can handle it. But uh, good night, everyone. May God bless each and every one of you. Every one of you. Excuse me. There as I get tongue tied. Roll tide, and go with grid. <laughs>